Hello everyone. Welcome to JG Chemistry class. Guys, today we will see a few examples of Popel's notations and dynamic proton NMR spectroscopy. You can see here few examples like AX AX series spin system and CIDNP under dynamic proton NMR spectroscopy. We will learn about this. The questions which I am going to discuss here will be taken from MSc Chemistry previous year question paper and both the topics are very important for your exam. Do watch the video till the end to understand both the concept. We will start with the first problem. So this is a problem given assigned Popel's notation for the following spin system. You have two examples one is acetaldehyde other is para-chloronitrobenzene. And uh, if you have already studied about the coupling constant, chemical shift value, proton NMR, basic concepts, you can go ahead with this video. Otherwise, you can first revise your concept related to first order, second order and Pascal's triangle and then you can solve these problems. I have already prepared the video. You can uh, watch those videos first and then come to this video. I will share the link in the description box. So, now acetaldehyde. As you can see here in proton NMR, we will see the different signals related to different type of protons. For this acetaldehyde, you have two different types of proton. One is for CH3, other is for the aldehydic proton. So we will expect two signals in proton NMR and we will see the multiplicity also. So this is the proton NMR spectra of acetaldehyde and you can see there are two signals. One is a quadrate, other is doublet. So how we are getting this as you can see the splitting occurs always because of the neighboring protons. So you have CS3 for this the neighboring proton is aldehyde proton which is 1 and according to Pascal's triangle n plus 1 rule n is the number of neighboring proton is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 doublet. So the quadrate uh, the CS3 will be splitting as a doublet here and the aldehyde proton is having 3 proton in the neighbor. 3 plus 1 is 4 and so the aldehyde proton will split as a quadrate here. We know the chemical shift value is indicated here. For aldehyde proton we get around 8 to 9 or 9 to 10 value chemical shift value. You are getting the multiplet there and uh, for CS3 you are getting here around 2.5 a doublet. So two uh, uh, signals are there with their multiplicity and now we have to see whether it is first order or second order spectra to give the Popel's notation. So we will see first point we, which we have to see symmetry about the midpoint of the multiplet. You can notice here this is the middle point where I am indicating with the laser. So it is the midpoint and you have a symmetry. Similarly for doublet you have a midpoint and we have a symmetry. So we can say it may be a first order spectra. Next is the line in intensity you can find out for this multiplet based on Pascal triangle that is n plus 1 rule. We have seen quadrant and doublet. You can solve it like this. And next is the j value which is a coupling constant value which can be determined by measuring the line intensities in the multiplet. So you have here three spacing here between the line and each is having equal in spacing. You can find out the j value and similar spacing you can find for the doublet. And since the spacing is same, we can say the two are coupling with each other and so it is in the neighbor. And see, we can say that it is a first order spectra and based on this, we can say A, X3 spectrum. A for one proton and X3 for the three protons. And as it is in alphabet widely spread, it is here also you can see in the spectra it is nicely spread. So first order spectra. For next, you have para chloronitrobenzene and here total 4 protons are there in the aromatic ring. So we will see how many signals we can expect, how many different types of protons are there. So if you know about uh, two terms called chemical equivalence and magnetically equivalence, if your concept is clear, you can solve this problem. So if you have no idea about it, I have already prepared a video on that. I will share the link in the description box. You can watch it and then you can solve it. So now you can see the two protons which are ortho to this chlorine are chemically equivalent as well as magnetically equivalent. Chemically equivalent means it has the same chemical shift value. Magnetically equivalent, equivalent means it will not couple with each other. 
Similarly, the two protons ortho to the nitro are chemically and magnetically equivalent and will not couple with each other. So basically, only the protons uh, which are ortho to chloro and ortho to nitro will couple with each other are chemically and magnetically non-equivalent and so it will couple. So one one proton is there and so we will expect two signals having the multiplicity doublet. Right, so each proton, one one proton will split the neighboring proton as doublet and you can find the two signals with doublet. So now again to find out whether first or second order, we will see the symmetry about the midpoint of the multiplet here. And next is the line intensity is according to the Pascal triangle, you can see n plus 1 and it is nicely spread also here. In uh, second order, you won't get the Pascal's triangle multiplicity and you cannot identify and it is not uh, uh, the widely spread also. So therefore, we can say it is a first order spectrum and we can say for both the protons A, X spectrum. It's nicely spread in the alphabet similarly here and so we can say it is A, X spectrum and so it is first order spectrum. I hope you have understood. If it is second order means uh, what will happen the, after the inner peaks will grow much longer and at the expense of the outer peaks. So outer peak will become very small and it will try to come very close to each other. So you will not be able to identify that it is two signals or it is only one signal. So therefore it is the destroyed uh, type of NMR spectrum where you are not able to identify the splitting multiplicity. Here we can, so it is first order. The next question is how are the formation of free radical intermediates recognized by dynamic proton NMR spectroscopy? So free radical intermediates how we can find out. You might have heard about the technique called CIDNP chemically induced dynamic nuclear polarization. I have prepared a detailed video on it. Uh, I'll again share the link, you can watch it. Here a few glimpses on it that what is CIDNP, the effect is detected by proton NMR spectroscopy as enhanced absorption or emission signals, that is negative peak. So if you look at the CIDNP spectrum, then here along with the positive peaks, which is above the plane, you will get the negative peaks also, which is below the plane. So if you're getting the negative peaks means it is indicating that the mechanism going through the free radical intermediates. So basically this same statement is mentioned here. It arises when unpaired electrons or radicals are generated in the chemical reaction. One example we will see, you have diisopropyl peroxide which is the initiator under thermal or photochemical condition, homolytic fission of the bond will take place and it will generate the free radical. Further, loss of carbon dioxide will give you a thiol radical and your molecule thiophenol will react with this highly active species and abstraction of proton will give you thiophenitol. So how we will prove the mechanism goes through with free radical intermediate that you will get the negative peaks for this. And so we can say this technique is a good evidence for the radical mechanism involved. If you want to see the spectrum that you can watch my the previous uh, the video on CIDNP where you will get the spectrum also. So another question like on the same topic if they ask write a short note on CIDNP and its usefulness you can mention the same answer. I hope you have understood the CIDNP technique also which is con comes under dynamic proton NMR spectroscopy. Guys if you haven't subscribe my channel yet please do subscribe it share it with your friend and if you like this video do like it